Okay, so this is video A, where we are gonna talk about the Aquapod's external and internal key features. So you can see this is an aluminum enclosure in both the um, structure internal as well as the panels on the outside. It's lockable, so there's two locks on each door with the keys inside the Aquapod. On the bottom, we have fork lift access. And on three sides of the Aquapod, we've got faucets installed. And these faucets have a theft-proof approach to where we can fasten them from the inside so they cannot be removed from the outside. So on each of the three sides, there's two faucets. On the right side of the Aquapod, with the two doors open, you can see the top side is the filtration system, and the bottom side is the pump access compartment. Down here on the lower left, we have the external hookups for source water input, back flush, and electricity for the electric pump. On the front main door, we have the water tank. It's a 450 liter water tank on the top. And then down below, we've got a hose shelf for the, the hoses. We've got spare filters. We've got the pump compartment, which is a suite of pumps from Xylem. So up front here, we've got the Godwin Petro Pump, the Gould's electric pump in the back, and then the Saji treadle pump. Okay, this is video B, and one of the first things that we need to explain is this filter is shipped with a protective fluid inside the UF filter, and that needs to be drained. It's, it's a, a fluid that helps protect the, the membrane during shipment and against any bacteria growth inside the fi filter. So the process for that is shown on page 10 of the manual. And so the first thing that we do is we open valves number one and number eight. So we open valve number one up here, then we go down and we open valve eight and then what you'll see will happen is the next step we have to push the air release valve up here and once we do that the fluid will start to exit the filter from the back flush valve on the bottom and you can hear the air coming in through the top and so we need to hold this button in on, on valve 16 until all of the fluid exits the filter So once all the water exits the, the back flush valve here, we let go of the release valve number 16, and then we simply shut number one, and then we shut number eight. And that concludes the, the process of emptying the filter of its protective fluid. Okay, a continuation of video B in terms of system preparation, and we're gonna talk about how to install the carbon filter. So inside the Aquapod, when you receive it, you'll have 15 of these filters. Um, each carbon filter will treat about 10,000 liters of clean water, and they all come individually wrapped, and they need to stay that way until the actual use. Um, if you unwrap them early, what can happen is the granulated carbon can absorb the air, and so it's best to keep them wrapped until time of use. Um, once you unwrap the filter and are ready to install this, you'll notice on the, on the top of this filter, is a silicone o-ring and that always needs to be mounted on the top and on the bottom you'll see the vents um, that goes on the bottom and um, that's where the the water source water comes into the filter so again when you mount this the o-ring is on top so the process for mounting that the first thing we do is we 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 unattach the housing the filter housing we take the the filter again o-ring on top drop it into the housing and simply screw this back on and we tighten this hand tight 
but not too tight. All we need is enough for the O-ring to engage to create the water seal. All right, this is video C, where we're gonna talk about the hoses and management of the hoses in the aquapod. So when you receive the aquapod, you'll see the overflow hose for the top tank, um, the clean water tank is positioned in the aquapod like this, and it needs to be inserted into that small hole on the left front of the compartment. Just like that. So now in terms of hoses, we have, we have, so in terms of supply line hoses, the aquapod comes with three hoses. We've got the long hose, 34 meter hose for water input. It's got the foot valve strainer on one end, a coupling on the other. We have the flush hose for the flushing of the filter. It's a five meter hose. And we have a 2.5 meter hose that's used um, with the Saji treadle pump. So basically what we do first is we hook up the flushing hose to the aquapod quick connects. And that's attached to the top connection. And we stretch that hose out because that'll be the flush water and we put that wherever we want it. Then the next hose, if we're using the Saji pump, the next hose is we take this 2.5 meter hose and we hook that up to the water input. We then hook the other end up to the Saji. At the same time, we're taking the long source water hose and we're putting that on the other side of the Saji. So this long hose then will take out to the source water and we'll, we'll put the foot valve into the source water. Now in cases where we do not use the Saji, where we use the, the electric pump or the petrol pump, then what we do is we disconnect these two fittings. We put those two hoses together And this becomes the mode of operation for the source water hose that then drives the aquapod, electric pump, or the petrol pump. As a continuation of video C, uh, in the tank compartment, we have this three-way valve um, with a red handle on it. And when that red handle is horizontal, that's the standard uh, normal position for that to be in. And basically what that means is the water is coming in from the filtration system, it's coming down and then it's being diverted into the top tank, um, the, the, the clean water tank. When that valve is in its vertical position, such as this, then that water is then rerouted out this exit here. And, and what that's used for is, is you can put in a, a hose barb connector, it's a slip fitting. You can glue in a hose barb connector and use an external hose to actually fill other tanks. Um, that could be a truck tank that comes by or or if this if the aquapod tank is full that can be used to bring water to other sources external to the aquapod. The other thing that's up here is this switch here. It's a water tank level switch and that manages the flow or the tank level uh, sensor that's inside the tank. And so in cases where the water tank is removed for cleaning uh, this union needs to be disconnected to dis disconnect the three-way valve and then this switch needs to be taken apart so the tank can be removed from the aquapod. Okay, we're now on video D to show how to operate the petro pump. So once the hoses are attached as, as instructed in the prior video, the first thing we want to do is assure that all valves on the filtration system are closed. We then go and we open valves one, we open valve nine, and we open the gate valve 10, all the way open. We then take the, the funnel that's hanging inside the pump compartment, and we go to the 
the petrol pump and we add gas to the gas tank until it's full. We also will check the oil level based on the gray cap here. We'll then open the blue cap and prime that with water and then replace and tighten the cap. The next thing that we'll do is we'll go to the valves. We have 13, 14, and 15. And we'll make sure that valve number 13 is open and assuring that 14 and 15 are in the closed position. We then go back to the petrol pump and we take the choke lever and we move it to its up position. We then press the priming bulb repeatedly until fuel can be seen in the clear plastic fuel tube. We then turn the engine switch to on position. And then we start the engine by pulling the starter grip and we do that lightly until you feel resistance, then pull briskly to start the engine. So as the engine warms up, we take the choke and we return that to its down position, which makes it open. We then take the throttle valve and we set the throttle to a medium speed. Okay, we're now operating the petrol pump. And as you can see, we've got flush water coming out of our flush. We're running at medium speed. And we're going to do this rinse for 10 minutes. Then after 10 minutes of flushing the filter, we're going to go to the next step and we're going to open valve 3 and we're going to close valve 1 and immediately go to look at the pressure gauge and you're going to see that it's gone up to about 17. So we're going to close the valve down because we want that meter to read 10 PSI, such as this. This is video E to provide instructions on how to use the electric pump with the aquapod. So as with the other processes, the first step is to make sure that all valves on the filtration system are closed. We then, as our first steps, we open valve one. We then open valve nine. And we then open the gate valve number 10. We then take an 11 millimeter wrench and we go down to the pump and we open this top bolt up on the top of the pump and that's where we prime this electric pump. We fill that with water, then we replace and tighten the bolt. From there, we go over to our pump valves and we make sure that valve 14 is in its on position. Valve 13 and valve 15 remain in their closed position. We then take our provided power reel with the aquapod and we make the attachment of our power connection to the aquapod. We then go to the switch box and we lift up on the switch to turn power on to the electric pump. You can hear the pump activation and rinsing mode has begun. So if you look at the rinse hose, we're now rinsing the filter. And we're gonna do that for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes is over, we're gonna go to the next steps of opening valve number three. And then we're gonna close valve number one. 
and immediately go to the pressure gauge and you can see that the pressure has gone up to about 20 psi so we rapidly need to close the gate valve 10 until the pressure gauge gets to our desired point of 10 psi and you can see the flow meter is currently flowing between 12 and 16 liters per minute and now we're in the filtration mode so from this point we'll move on to chlorination which will be a later video a video G that will be shown at a later point video F to present the operation of the Saji pump. So as you can see here, um, per our earlier instruction video on the hoses, we've got the Saji pump hooked up. This is the long hose that goes to the source water. We've got this small 2.5 meter hose that goes to the lower connection on the aquapod. And then the upper five meter hose is our backwash hose. So as before, we start all operations with all valves in an off position on the aquapod filter at filtration system. We then move as our first steps. We open valve one. We open valve nine. And then we open valve number 10, the gate valve. We then move over to our pump valves, 13 and 14 and 15. And this time we make sure that 15 is in its open position and 14 and 13 remain closed. At that point, we can begin operations on the Saji pump. and that act activates the rinsing mode. So you can see on our back flush hose, we are actually rinsing the filter now. We do that for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes time, we then open valve number three and we close valve number one which starts the filtration mode. And as you can see, the, the pressure gauge has moved up to 15 to 20. So we'll want to move down the gate valve and wind that gate valve down until our pressure is at the desired level of 10 PSI. From there, we move on to the chlorination stage, which will be presented later in video G. This is video G, where we're gonna present the instruction on how to operate the dosatron chlorination pump inside the aquapod. First, um, some important safety uh, items that are included with the aquapod in the toolbox, you'll find rubber gloves, that should be used when working with the chlorine, along with goggles. Um, very important to be wearing the goggles during use. A couple other things included is a small beaker that we will use to measure out the chlorine. And then there's a mixing stick, a plastic mixing stick that will be used to mix the chlorine solution once it's put into the dosing tank. Okay, carrying on from the last uh, video where you used one of the three pumps, um, you will hear, once we move into chlorination mode, you'll hear the clicking sound of the dosatron. That's actually the pump inside the dosatron engaging. The next step, what we then do is we go to valve five and we open this valve, which will start to bring water from the filtration system into the dosing tank. 
and so that water is now flowing into the dosing tank and you can see the level going up and what we'll do is we'll fill that tank till the water you can see through the semi-transparent tank gets exactly to the point of this arrow and then once we're at that point we close valve five so the clean water has now reached the arrow as you can see the shadow of the water inside the dosing tank and so what we then do is we go up and we close valve number five which discontinues the water flow into the dosing tank video G where we're going to talk about the aquapod chlorination process so the system was designed to utilize standard household bleach as part of its chlorination process so this is bleach that you would typically find in a in a supermarket or grocery store with a concentration of around five to six percent so it's important to look for that and also included in the aquapod uh, toolbox is a small beaker that's a 50 milliliter graduated beaker so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the bleach and we're going to take 300 milliliters which is six pours of the 50 milliliter beaker and since we've already put five of these pours into the tank already we're just going to demonstrate one so this is the sixth pour of 50 milliliters that we're adding so after these six pours there will be 300 milliliters inside the solution tank we then take the stirring stick and we stir very well the chlorine solution to where we can make sure we properly mix the chlorine into the water then we remove we place the cap back on and we're ready to start the chlorination process this is video C um, for instruction on how to adjust the dosatron unit and so to change the settings on the dosatron basically what you do is you unscrew the locking nut and then you can unwind the bezel to get to the value that you want and then you tighten the locking nut back And that's basically how the dosatron adjustments are set. It's a continuation of video G. As you can see and hear, the dosatron's making its clicking sound, so we're producing clean water from the aquapod. Now we're going to talk about how we do the testing for chlorine. And so the first step for that is on valve six here. Um, basically, what we're going to do is uncoil the hose that comes from six. We're going to point it to the ground and open valve six. And so we'll have water flowing out to the right of the dot dosatron. So this is water that is being chlorinated. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a 1.5 liter bottle. And it's important that we use a 1.5 liter sample due to the piston cycle of the dosatron. So we'll take this bottle, an empty clean bottle, and we'll fill that up. We'll fill that up till it's full. And then we'll shut off valve number six. And so this 1.5 liter sample is what we use to test the uh, chlorine levels with. And we'll use the included chlorine strips. And ideally we want to be between a 0.5 and a one reading. And you can compare the strips um, versus the color scale on the side of the, of the uh, strip bottle. And so you'll use that to routinely test the chlorine. And again, as earlier um, explained, you can make adjustments to the dosatron settings to get your chlorine level into the range that's required, understanding that temperature and pH and different things will affect uh, the chlorine rating.
We're on video H, and we're going to talk about how do we clean the aquapod on its daily cleaning procedure. So right now we're in water production mode. You can hear the dosatron clicking. Clean water is being produced and driven to the clean water tank. And so the first steps that we move into the cleaning process, what we're going to do is we're going to open valve one. We're going to make sure valve two and three are closed. So we're going to close three in this case. Then we're going to open valve seven. And as you can see, water is coming out the back flush down here. We open valve seven and we air pump. We push the air pump 25 times. So basically what this air pump is doing is it's purging air into the UF filter body, which disrupts the, the contaminants and allows them to be flushed out of the filter uh, out of the output down here. So after 25 times of pumping the air pump, we're then going to close valve 7. And then we're going to close valve 9. And then immediately shut off the pump. Okay, so whether you're using a petrol pump, whether you're using the electric pump, or, uh, or the Saji pump, we stop pump operations at this time. The next step is we're going to open valve 8, and we're going to press 16, which is the air release valve. And what's going to happen is that's going to allow us to drain the filter of the water inside the filter. And this will take a bit of time. Um, you keep your finger on the on the air release valve number 16 and hold that in. You can hear the air going into that as the filter's draining. So you'll see the water starting to stop. So now the filter is, is drained of its water. So the next step then is to close valve eight, which we've just done. Then we're going to open up valve four, which is the chlorine funnel. And we're gonna take liquid bleach and we're gonna add 200 milliliters. So that's four pores of this bleach into the funnel. I'm only gonna do one for demonstration purposes but you'll do that four times. So you'll put four of those in inside the funnel. Then after that, we'll take 500 milliliters of clean water. Um, you can get this from the faucets earlier. I like to use a water bottle like this and we'll put that clean water We'll put that clean water into the funnel and then we'll close four. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to turn back on nine and we're going to restart the pump. So I turn on valve nine and in this case I'm using the electric pump. I'm going to start the pump and you'll see a small amount of water. Um, we'll exit um, nine. but we wait about 30 seconds. So after 30 seconds, the minute water starts to come out of this, we're gonna close nine. So keep an eye on this, and this happens about 30 seconds, 30 to 35 seconds. So anytime now, there we go, water. We're gonna shut nine, and we're immediately going to shut off the pump again. Now what we have, we're in the situation where we've got chlorinated water inside the body of the UF filter. And we're going to allow that to soak for 10 minutes. And what that does is the chlorine gets some of this extra stubborn um, contaminants that might adhere to the hollow fiber membranes. And so the chlorine will give it a deeper clean after a 10 minute soak. And then we'll exit that water and I'll show how that'll, that'll be done. So again, 10 minutes have passed. Um, the next step we're going to do again is we're going to open eight. And then we're going to go back again and hold the, uh, the press release valve. And you can see the water coming back out. And now what we're doing is we're draining the chlorine water that we, that we put in there for the 10 minute soak. So that water is exiting the filter.
okay? And it's important, the last step in that, in that procedure is to close valve eight. So now, the final coming up to the final steps of the cleaning process, we're gonna turn nine on one more time and we're gonna start the pump. And, and again down here, just after 30 seconds, the filter will begin to flush again from the output flush uh, number eight. So here comes the flush water. And we're gonna let the system flush now for, for an additional uh, 10 minutes. And the reason why we do that is to make sure the chlorine that we put into the UF system is flushed out so it doesn't make its way to the faucets. So we're gonna flush for 10 minutes. And then the final steps, after that 10 minutes of flushing is complete, we're, we're simply going to open valve three and close valve one. And you can hear the dosatron starting to activate again. We're back into clean water production mode. And so this concludes the, the process for the daily cleaning. So this is our last video, I, um, which will explain the, the, the process for pre-storage of the, the aquapod. So the aquapod was designed that where once it's deployed for, for events, um, be it an emergency or in the wake of a natural disaster, the aquapod can then be prepared and restaged for future events. So the process we're gonna go through right now is how to prepare the filter um, to be restaged. So as you can see down here, um, we've got the water input line hooked up, and that should be brought into a clean water tank. And we're only gonna need about 50 liters of clean water, but make sure that the source water for this procedure is clean water and not dirty water. So the input hose will be in a clean water source. Um, we've left uh, the, the number eight open so we can see the back flush water come out of that. So the first processes we're gonna do here is we're gonna open three valves, number one, number nine, and number 10. So we open number one, we open number nine, and we open number 10. Then we're gonna start the pump. And so you can see coming out um, down here that'll come out of uh, this, this back flush connection number eight. Will be, will be uh, the water that's flushing out of the, out of the filter. So you can see this, and we're gonna flush for three minutes. So keep this flushing going. Again, this is clean water coming through the filter. We're gonna do that for three minutes to make sure we get the, the membrane clean. So after the three minutes have passed, we're gonna stop the pump. Then we're gonna open valve eight and then depress as we did before the air release valve 16. So again, you can hear the water coming, or the air coming into release valve 16, and the water exiting the filter. So keep your finger pushed on the air release valve until all the water comes out of the filter. Okay, so now that the water has exited the filter, we're gonna let go of the release valve, and then we're gonna close valves eight and nine. So we close valve eight, close valve nine, then we're gonna open valve four, the chlorine funnel. Then we're gonna take our chlorine in our small 50 milliliter beaker, and we're gonna do six of these. 
into the into the uh, funnel. So that's that's equivalent to uh, 300 milliliters of bleach. And I'm only going to do one for demonstration purposes, but you'll do six of these beakers, and you'll pour that into the funnel. So after you pour six of those in, then you'll take again a bottle of clean water, 500 milliliters. Um, just use a water bottle for this, and add that water into the funnel. Then be sure to close valve four. Again, make sure that there's no connection on eight down here below because we want to see the water coming out of that as part of the next step. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open valve nine and then we're going to start the pump again. So we open valve nine. Start the pump. So as before, after about 30 seconds, we're going to see water start to exit the connection number eight down here after about 30 seconds. And when that takes place, the, the minute water comes out of, of that connection, we want to immediately, immediately close um, valve one. So have your hand on one and be ready. There it goes. So now the, once the water came out, I closed number one. Then I'm gonna close number nine. I'm gonna close number 10. And I'm gonna shut off the pump. So nine, then 10 and shut off the pump. So now the, the Aquapod filter is ready for storage. We've got a chlorine solution inside the body of the filter and in the piping network. And this process will need to be done every six months during the storage period um, to make sure that the, the, uh, the, the filter is free of any bacteria growth and so forth. So this is the, the final video to talk about the uh, filtration uh, preparation. There's a couple more pages of things to look after, including the chlorine solution tank, emptying the chlorine, um, replacing and removing the uh, carbon filter. Um, there's something on the, the clean water tank, um, cleaning that and making sure that the plumbing connections are drained. And then some, some steps to address with the pumps in terms of removing fuel and, and preparing the pumps for long-term storage as well and then obviously cleaning and, and preparing the aquapod for storage.